What is up, everybody? I hope you guys are doing great this Sunday morning. First full week in the New Year's. I hope it is doing well. Right now, I'm in a messy house because quarantine. But I still get to be with you guys thanks to the blessing of being online. So, I hope you guys are doing great. And today, we are talking about sharing. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Before you tune me out and think, oh, I'm not. This, I've been through pre-K. I know how to share. This is different. This is different. So, we're going to talk about sharing, but first we've got a game. So, let's go do that. What's up, guys? How are you? Hope you're ready to play a game, because I sure am. Sorry, that was weird. Like I said, we're talking about sharing. And like I said, give me a minute. Not going to be a kindergarten lesson, I promise. I know you guys know how to share, but we're going to talk about what's important. But first, I got a game for both you guys, online and in service. We're going to play a sharing, would you rather. All right, so I'm going to give you two options. Would you rather share this or that? You have to pick it. You can't pick neither. You have to pick one as the rules, okay? So play with your family, play with those around you, and let's see the first one. Would you rather share a room with somebody, like a sibling if you have one, or... I don't know, cousin, um, or have to share the bathroom with somebody, right? So would you rather share a room and get your own bathroom or share a bathroom and get your own room? For me, it's tough because, like, I like to take a bath, and so that takes a long time. And if somebody has to go to the bathroom and I'm in the bath, then it's awful. But then also, like, sleeping, in, I don't know if I want to share a room because people are messy. I don't know. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I'm going to have to go with bathroom, though, okay? I'd rather share a bathroom. Second one, would you rather share your wardrobe, right, your clothes, with somebody else, or would you rather have to share your video games with somebody else? Now, for those of you who aren't gamers, that might be an easy choice. Video games all day, every day, duh. But, I don't know. I would rather share my clothes, because having to share my video games might get ugly over there. Alright, third, would you rather, this one's kind of gross, share a toothbrush with somebody, Brush your teeth with the same toothbrush, or would you rather share the same cup and drink out of the same cup as somebody else all day, every day, right? So use the same toothbrush as somebody every time you brush your teeth, or share a cup every time you want to drink something. Both of those are gross, but I would rather do the cup. I would, mm, I just don't want to, I can't imagine brushing my teeth, because people's teeth, and ugh, that's gross. That's gross. Alright, how we doing? Feeling kind of gross right now? I do. Sorry, I kind of came up with those questions. My fault. Fourth, would you rather share one pencil, all right? You only have one pencil. Share the same pencil with a classmate to do y'all's school or share one computer with a classmate and do your school. So would you rather have to share a pencil to write down all your notes or a computer to do all your online work? Neither of those sound fun. Now, I do more stuff on my computer than I do with a pencil. I don't know about you guys, so I would rather have to share a pencil because I don't have to use it as much as my computer. So, last one. Let's see how you're feeling. Would you rather share each of your meals with somebody? So, when you get a plate of food, you have to share half that plate with somebody. Or, would you rather have to share half your birthday money? So, either every single meal, you split half of your meal with somebody... Or, every single birthday, you have to give somebody half of the money that you get, or half the presents. <sighs> That's a really tough one. It's a tough one. <sighs> Let me think. I didn't really think about this one. I would probably do half my birthday money because that's only one time, and I would not have to want to share half my meals every single day. So, I don't know about you guys. Let me know what you decided, and I will see you guys later. Hey guys, it's Mare, and like Sam said, we're talking about sharing today. And so when you were playing the game, you probably noticed some of them were easier than others. Maybe sharing your wardrobe when you have a large closet of clothes is much easier than if you had a tiny little closet like I do. And maybe if you don't play video games, then you have no problem sharing your video games because you don't even play them. But what about when it's something that we enjoy and we like? Maybe like sharing half your birthday money or like personally I got Christmas money and I don't know that I'd want to share it with you and so we hear all about sharing a lot 
but why do we do it? Why do we have to share it? Like, is it a rule for us as Christians? Like, do we have to do it? And to answer that question, Jesus lays down a perfect story for us, so we're going to jump into that. I am back in a brand new month and a brand new year. It is January of 2021. How exciting is that? So, we are going to start off our 2021 with a new memory verse for the month. Alrighty, so, we are going to be in Luke 16.10. So, let's hop right into it. Alrighty, so, first word is suppose. We are going to put our thinking faces on and tap our chin. So, suppose that you can be trusted. Make pinky promise with yourself. All right, connect your pinkies. So, suppose that you can be trusted with something very small. Very small. All right, that's our first half. So, suppose you can be trusted with something very small. Then you can also be trusted. We're gonna make a pinky promise again. Then you can also be trusted with something very large. <laughs> All right, so let's put our two parts together. Suppose you can be trusted with something very small. Then you can also be trusted with something very large. And that is in Luke 16.10. Great job, you guys. Bye. Hey, yo, how you guys doing? I hope you're ready to talk about today's lesson because your boy is. So, like I said, we're talking about sharing today and you're probably like, wow, I'm back in pre-K. I remember when my teacher taught me to share. Okay, we know how to share. That's obvious. That's easy. Sharing is just giving what you have. But there's a little bit more to that. So we're going to dive in. Today, we have a parable from Jesus. What's a parable, Sam? You ask. Great question. Let's figure out. A parable is like a story. You see, within the story of the Bible, we have littler stories, mini stories. And some of these are called parables. Now, most parables are told by Jesus. They're found in the New Testament in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so in these Gospels, Jesus tells stories called parables. And the point of a parable is to make a point, right? He's trying to teach us a lesson. In every parable, there's always a lesson. So we're diving into a parable today in Luke chapter 12. And if you guys want to join me, it'll be in chapter 12, verse 13. So on this day, Jesus is out and about, doing his normal Jesus stuff, right? Healing people, multiplying bread, or whatever he does on a normal Jesus day. And he decides to tell a lesson. He's telling a parable. And there's probably thousands of people gathered around. So let's see how he starts this parable. Now, if your Bible has a little header, it's called Parable of the Rich Fool. Hmm. Rich Fool. All right, let's see what this has to say. So we're going to look at verse 13. It says, Then someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. So, what is that all about? So Jesus is talking, right? He's probably telling a story, talking about the Bible, and some dude says, Hey, my brother won't give me what I want. Right? He says, My brother won't give me half my estate. Basically, his inheritance. He won't give it half of him. He wants half of his brother's inheritance. He's not getting it. So he says, Jesus, you got this. Kind of like, kind of like a tattletale. He kind of tattles on his brother to try and get Jesus to help him out. And Jesus, well, you think Jesus said, oh yeah, sure. No. Jesus had a different idea. So he tells the story about the rich Fool. So, jumping down, we're going to start in verse 16. It says, Then he told him a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced 
fine crops. So this dude had a great farm, right? He had great land, grew tons and tons of crops. Moving on to verse 17, it says, He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. So, he's sitting there. And his land is so good that the storehouses, the silos, you know, have you ever been out in the country and you see those big, tall, circular towers? Those are silos. They're meant to hold grains or whatever produce is made in the farms. And so he says, my, my silos, my barns, they're just not big enough. I am making too much food. And so he has some choices to make. And, well, he ends up making this one. Let's check out verse 18. It says, Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. So, he's got tons of food. Now, I don't know if you, about you guys, but you probably don't need barns and barns full of food. And you probably don't need bigger barns and barns of food either. And so... He kind of just chose, I'm going to take everything and keep it. I'm going to hoard it all, and I'm going to keep it all for myself so that no one else can have it. I'll sell it, I'll make money, I'll have plenty to eat in my giant barns. But here's a different story. Jumping in to verse 19, it says, And I'll sit back and say to myself, My friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat drink, and be merry. So, he said, oh, this is going to be easy. Life's good. I'm going to have barns so big that I won't have to work for like 10 years. I can just chill. I can just relax and not have to do anything. He's going to tear down his barns, put his goods away. He's just going to pedal paddle. You know, he's not going to do anything. He's just going to kick it, ah, relax. Because he's got so much. Why even worry? But, it takes a different turn. God spoke directly to this farmer and it says, You fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Well, that didn't end well for him, now did it? He was so worried about keeping everything, so worried about making enough and getting enough and having enough, that things just ended and things changed and, well, it didn't go his way. So why is that important? What's the story behind that? Well, Jesus is calling us to not focus on what we have, but focus on what we have can give. So, let's jump into worship, and then we'll talk more about this after. See you guys there.
really love that story, guys, because it shares an interesting perspective on stuff. You see, the world today tells us, like, get more, do more, make more money, earn more things, have cooler cars, the best video games, the best computers, the best phones, get more and more and more. But Jesus says, no, that's not the case. He wants us to do more. You see, he modeled a life of giving up, right? He modeled the life of not focusing on what we can do to get more, but focusing on what we can do with what we have, right? Jesus didn't have a lot, but he loved people well. What did he do? He ate with them, like, you don't need a lot to go have a meal with somebody. Um, he healed people. He spoke kind words to people. He taught people and led them. These are all things that Jesus did. He gave up his time. He gave up what he had. He gave wisdom, right? He did these things. None of that really costs money. So what do you have, guys? What do you have that you can give? You can give your time. You can give money. You can do chores around the house. You can help people. So why do we do that, though? Well, because Jesus did it. And Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. You see, he's not just some being, some thing out there that did a cool thing once and kind of knows you. No, he wants to know you. And the best way we can do that is to follow his example. He came down to earth to die for us so that we could know him. It's not instantaneous. It's not a magic barrier we have to break through. It's through a life of living like he lived. So, when Jesus calls us to do something, he's not calling it like a nagging mom, somebody telling you what to do. He's not trying to make you do something because it's the right thing. He wants to know you. He wants to have a relationship with you. And he does that by calling you to live like he did. And as you live more and more like Jesus, you get to know him more and more. Because remember, Jesus shared the ultimate thing. That was his life. He gave and surrendered his life for you so that you could know him. His death, burial, and then resurrection from the grave gave us an opportunity not only to be safe from our sins, but to get to know our Heavenly Father who made us. And He wants to share that with you, right? He wants to share all that He made with you. So we have to work on sharing. What can we share? Not necessarily money or things or whatever, but how can we share Jesus with other people? How can we share his love with other people? If you don't get anything else out of this message, if you've tuned out and everything crazy is going on in your house, just listen to this. Jesus loves you. And he wants you to show that love so that others can know him. So think about it. What can you share today? Be intentional, because you guys rock. I will see y'all next week. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome week. Bye, guys.